is this Captain Mike Abershoff of the U.S. Navy. In the late 1990s, Captain Abershoff commanded a ship called the USS Benfold. The USS Benfold is a technological wonder. It can simultaneously seek out and destroy submarines, surface craft, also known as ships, and airplanes. As you can imagine, the crew of the USS Benfold is made up of some pretty technical and smart folks. Captain Abershoff set all-time records for performance and retention in the Navy when he was captain of the Benfold. And this was really noteworthy because back when Captain Abershoff took over the Benfold, the Navy had an employee retention problem. In fact, employee retention was at an all-time low. Only about 30% of sailors actually finished their tour of duty. When Captain Abershoff took command of the Benfold on a sunny day down in San Diego, he was shocked to see that as his predecessor left the ship, the whole 310-member crew was cheering. And he vowed that that would not happen to him. Captain Abershoff had a dream for the Benfold that the entire crew would finish their tour of duty and maybe even respect him in the process. Captain Abershoff had this dream for the Benfold, but he had no idea how he was going to make that happen. Captain Abershoff took inspiration from his former employer, Mr. Bill Perry, who was the Secretary of State back in the Clinton administration, Captain Abershoff knew that Mr. Perry was an excellent listener. When he would listen to someone, he would fix his eyes on that person, and he would make that interaction the most important thing in his life at that moment. And Captain Abershoff decided that he was going to do exactly that as commander of the Benfold. Captain Abershoff started listening to his subordinates. In fact, he invited each one of the 310-member crew into his office, and he listened to what they had to say and asked a lot of questions. He found out all kinds of things. For example, the sailors were telling him that they have to paint the ship every two months. They were constantly painting. By the time they finished painting one side, they would have to go and finish and paint the other side, and then they'd have to start all over again. And this is because the ships were outfitted with ferrous metal bolts and fittings. And the bolts and fittings would rust, and so they had to paint all the time. Well, when the sailors told him this, Captain Abershoff outfitted the entire ship with non-ferrous metal bolts and fittings. And they, never, they only had to paint once a year at that, after that. Since they had so much extra time that they weren't spending painting and extra money because they didn't have to buy all those supplies, the sailors were able to spend more time taking correspondence courses and bettering themselves. Captain Abershoff also made some other changes. For example, he heard from the sailors that the mattresses were really uncomfortable. So he outfitted the ship with really comfortable mattresses since they were out at sea for long periods of time. And one of the sailors suggested, why don't we have jazz music up on deck on the Thursday? And so that started a new tradition for the Benfold. They would have jazz music every Thursday afternoon. But it wasn't just these small things that Captain Abershoff changed. He also taught the sailors to think for themselves. They had a completely different way of doing their jobs. He gave them responsibility and allowed them to make their own decisions. The real test of this different way of working came when the Navy 
inspected the bent fold. Now when there's an inspection, a captain is usually hovering over the sailors and micromanaging every detail of the inspection. However, Captain Abershoff decided to stay on shore and let the, his, the sailors do the inspection. <clears throat> he was nervous, and people thought he was crazy, but he decided to give his crew that responsibility, and they pulled it off without a hitch. They cast the ship off from its slip in San Diego Harbor, and they brought it out to the open ocean with no problems at all. He knew he could count on them. The real test of redemption wasn't when everything was going well and the sailors were exceeding Captain Abershoff's expectations. The real test came once when things went horribly wrong and the worst of human nature was on display. The ship docked at Bahrain Harbor and about 30 of the sailors got off the ship and went on shore and they headed straight for the bar where they drank and got really drunk. And when they got on the bus to come back, there were two African-American sailors who were singing rap songs that contained a racial epithet. There were a bunch of sailors that were really offended by that and one white sailor just kept telling them to tone it down, and they wouldn't. They were really bugging everyone. So when the sailors got off the bus, the, one of the white sailors used the racial epithet himself. And then a fight broke out, and it got really ugly. Captain Abershoff, the next morning, took all the sailors into a room. And he had about 60 witnesses to the incident. He asked the witnesses to testify, and after they testified, the sailors that were involved wouldn't admit what they did. So Captain Abershoff leveled with them. He told them, you know, you have a choice here. If you want to stay in the Navy, you need to tell me the truth. I think because they respected Captain Abershoff so much, the sailors actually admitted that they used the racial epithet. And the sailors got some consequences for this. They, they were punished. They were docked pay for three months. They had to stay on the ship for 45 days, and they got extra chores. But all the sailors were able to get beyond this and work together. The USS Benfold was named after a sailor named Edward Benfold, who in the 1950s, gave his life to save two of his comrades. Captain Abershoff never told the crew this, but he wanted to make Edward Benfold proud of the ship that bears his name, and he felt that he did just that.